I was sitting in the Kinston Police Department parking lot when several cop cars started pulling out with their lights flashing, speeding this way towards Pine Street. Check out this heavy police presence with crime scene tape. You can see officers on scene here. Take a look at this tree line here behind me. As we walk, I can feel the heat coming off from these branches. Well, many are celebrating Independence Day. These people on the streets of New Bern are protesting the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade just a week ago. This was by far the outcome everyone had prayed for. Amari OK after being missing for nearly 24 hours. This FedEx truck coming across the road, hitting two cars and trying to assault a child in one of the cars after he crashed into this warehouse. Incredibly tight race. Just one vote. How are you feeling standing here right now? Well, I am so excited. <laughs> Kids and locals are finding innovative ways to sled. Rachel, it was so warm yesterday. We were awesome. able to take our dogs to the beach. We had a great mm -hmm. time. Is it going to be that way today? We'll be out on the water 24 seven, making sure people are safe to sort out a decision on mask wearing. These are just a few of the signs left behind, which he says produce a lot of smoke. I'm actually going to take a step away from the camera here to try to show you just how big those plumes are. Let me zoom in here. Mr. Oinkard Jr. here is a feisty little guy. His owner, Travis Stanley Harper, tells me he must have escaped through a hole in the fence, now blockaded up, so he doesn't escape again. We turn to the latest on the mass shooting at an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas. Police say 21 people were killed, including 19 children. She's pleading with the community to help law enforcement track down the suspect. She says he's my only brother. I want nothing more than to find the suspect, the man, please. Returning from the sky and the sea, Marines and sailors boots reach American soil for the first time in seven months. Days like this are so important. It's with heavy hearts, Captain Kelton Cochran and First Lieutenant Mark Andres welcome home the final group of their fellow Marines with the 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit. I mean, it's it's pretty, pretty emotional. Their unit is the same one deployed to evacuation operations in Afghanistan and the same one Sergeant Nicole G, one of the 13 killed in the bombings, served with. Uh, it's very hard to describe. Um, just spending that amount of time away and uh, uh, just uh, experience the things we did and then come home. G's memory, they say, is a reminder to those who served to appreciate the time they have and the people waiting to embrace them when they return. The Marines and sailors uh, get some of that time back and they get to reunite uh, with their loved ones. As a dad, it's, it's really my worst fear to get a phone call from my daughter not knowing and her life is in danger. Tuesday morning, Robert and Letitia North got a message no parent wants to receive from their daughter, who they say was on jury duty in the Craven County Courthouse. She sent us a text that she was scared and that she loved us and that she believed that there was an active shooter outside or inside the courtroom. She wasn't sure. Move! Here's cell phone video footage of that moment when a man opened fire in broad daylight in downtown New Bern. You can see Dolores Thomas in the left side of this video pointing to where she saw the shooter. She tells me in that moment of chaos, she was terrified. We were guns just shooting and we were sitting on the bench and the gun uh, went off and that was that same pop, pop, pop. Thomas says she never expected this type of violence to happen in the quiet city of New Bern. Neither did the Norths, saying they'll be holding their daughter extra close tonight. Sometimes people hear uh, things like this on the news and because they think it's not in their neighborhood or maybe not in their area, um, you know, they're sympathetic for others. But when it really hits home, it's an awareness of, you know, what can we do to prevent this um, from happening. I'm always going to be your Lana. I'm always going to be his wife. Opening up about her husband wasn't easy for Lena Reynolds, but she chose to sit down with me to share his story and make sure his sacrifice is not forgotten. He was so dedicated to me, to others. He was doing what he loved. He loves flying and he's still flying right now. Lena wears his watch, which still shows the time in Norway. She showed me the memories, including one thing she found in his backpack. We would study together 
and he made all these flashcards. Lena's husband, Captain Ross Reynolds, was one of four Marines killed in a helicopter crash during a training exercise in Norway. Lena says he was doing what he loved, flying. That was his dream, was to be a Marine Corps pilot and have a family. And um, he always had an interest from the beginning on, and he certainly carried that out. A man who cared for his country and everyone around him. I can't, words can't describe how proud I am of him and how much I love him because he was so caring. Lena tells me she knows he's watching over her from above. I sort of have a peace because I know I'm going to see you, Ross, again. I love you so much. I'm so proud. Her mission now is to make sure his memory isn't forgotten. I've got to carry this on and I'm going to carry it on for him. That's what he'd want me to do. He always did the right thing. And I'm going to do with every ounce of my might to do that for him. And I've got to represent him because he's so special. Until it's time for them to reunite again. Till my time, till God sends them to come pick me up in our Osprey.